I use the Sony FDR AX53 4K Handycam for making my YouTube videos. Anyway, yeah, it's a good camera, but um, it has this flaw where on the bottom of it, there's uh, the, the plastic around the tripod area cracked. And it seems like every time I unmount it or mount it, I lose more plastic. So I don't want it to accidentally fall apart on me uncontrolled. So what I'm going to do is rip this all apart and try to replace it with a 3D printed part. This Canon, I'm recording with this thinking, ha ha ha, I'm 10 years old and I work perfectly fine, Mr. Sony camera. The lower plastic mount that cracked is connected to all of this. So I had to remove it. Uh, some of it didn't want to come, so it was mostly tabbed in place, but not entirely. But this is cool, we can see the inside of the camera and the image stabilizer. Look at that, it's like a two-axis gimbal. Is that enabled right now? Let's see, uh, camera mic. It's called something, Steady Shot. Okay. So watch, if we turn it off, it just stays centered. But then if we turn it on, it becomes active. Isn't that cool? There's an extra tack switch that's not on the panel. I wonder what it does. Let's push it and find out. It's going to be like the self-destruct. Just watch. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so some of these cameras have projectors. Little uh, projectors built into the uh, screen here. I've seen them. So I guess if you have that model, that's what that button does. So they're probably just using um, using the same PCB for both models, even though this one does not have the built-in projector. No, seriously, it's really cool. Like it's like it's a little. I don't know. It's probably like a laser mirror projector. It's like this little square right here, and it will project you know three or four feet onto a wall. It's kind of cool. The base of this is metal. It feels like it's. Aluminum, and then there's this little widget. That's actually what has the, um, what is it? Uh, one quarter inch threaded insert. What I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna reproduce the bottom portion, which is this panel that says Sony, and then I will just uh, cut this from the side panel, then I can put the side panel back in place on the camera, even though part of it got ripped. So one of the first things I did before I totally ripped it apart was to create this rubbing, kind of like Indiana Jones does in The Last Crusade. So this is a rubbing of the bottom of the unit. It's a little hard to see here, but you can see where the uh, screw holes are. There's kind of a big gap where the uh, uh, quarter inch mount is, is, but that doesn't matter because we can also see the forward static mount, so that should be good. And then we have another screw back here, I believe. There it is. Now we'll measure this manually obviously as well but what I'll do is I'll scan this and that will give us a accurate flat representation of the bottom of the unit and we'll compare that to what we measure. Yeah some people might say Ben why do you have a scanner and I would say this is why I have a scanner so I can scan things just like your father giddy as a schoolboy. I told the professor he was never giddy even when he was a schoolboy. This should be actual size. That's the nice thing about uh, scanners. I've talked about those in other episodes. Somehow it's come in almost perfectly straight, which is hard to believe considering I just slapped a piece of paper. You know, the paper is in the laser scanner square, but apparently I rubbed it square. It's weird. This happens sometimes. I don't, there's another video where I did this too. Oh, yeah, it was in that... Uh, what was it? The... Um, the hoary uh, left-handed or single-handed controller episode where I randomly scaled an image and it was like exactly the right size. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've just developed this ability over the years. Kind of like, you know, when you watch a Western and they like shoot at the bad guys without even thinking, I don't know, like some sort of second nature. All right. Well, I guess I, I don't, I'm not even going to bother straightening that. It looks <laughs> pretty straight. I mean, I can always tweak it in uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, what I could do is increase the contrast. Let's see. So this part up here, this um, the part that has the front peg mount, that that's going to stay. We have a screw there and a screw there. And it is kind of weird um, that there's no screw on the other side of the mount. Well, there's actually some uh, clips in here. This piece of plastic clips under that one, so I'm going to try to recreate them. Also on the left side, this piece of material is static, and there's a lip that goes underneath it from this piece. Oh, and the Sony sticker's down there, so I'm going to have to make a spot for the Sony sticker so I can transplant it. So yeah, it's kind of not the greatest design, in my opinion, because you know, you've know you got this mounting point, and you've got two screws that are going into metal, but 
but the rest of it is plastic retention. And the fact that the, um, you know, your uh, mounting point is so close to the edge of plastic, which means you're going to have more stress lines to the edges of the plastic than you would versus, oh, say the bottom of this cannon where there's a lot more plastic. See the difference is it is surrounded by plastic, but the holes are nowhere near the edge of the plastic, which means if there are stresses, it'll take longer before they actually create a crack. Okay, here's the rubbing from the first half of the Grail tablet. Put it into uh, Adobe Illustrator, and it should scan an exact size. Uh, let's check it. Okay, so this is supposed to be 1.0895. And if we measure it, the actual part with the dial caliper, it's pretty darn close. So I think we have a pretty good accuracy. Now, if we uh, measure these holes here, these little uh, screw holes, they do seem a little different. I mean, because the rubbing is, go is going to be, it's not going to show the actual contours correctly, but it's going to show the relative placement correctly, if that makes sense. So like up here, the tip of the camera mount, I don't know, I don't know what it's called. Uh, you know, that's 0.206 inches in reality. I just kind of eyeballed it here, and then I made an offset of 0.1 inch, which is what it measured in real life. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and cut it on the laser just using some cardstock. That's a very cheap and fast way to see if it works. You think this is the real Quaid? It is. All right, let's see how we did with just the rubbing. There were rats, Dad. Big ones. Ah. Well, at least you kept my diary safe. I should have mailed it to the Marx Brothers. Wow, look at that. The rubbing is pretty much bang on. I, oh, wow. Um, this part down here looks like it might be a little inaccurate. See how it's on that lip. Actually, maybe it's supposed to be on that lip. Let's take a look. All right, back over here. I'm going to take the piece that I just laser cut. I'm going to slap it back over here. And the reason for that is because I already made the lower modification that we talked about earlier. So if I line this up, with the original piece, that is if it wants to behave, we should see that it's a little longer. Okay, so we measured uh, 0.638 from the bottom of that, which gives us this. And now I'll measure the tab. So I measure it to the right side of the tab here. So that's, oh, what a shock. It's like <laughs> basically quarter inch. And then the height of that, uh, 0.26. All right, so over here, I'm going to transform it from the right-hand side, 0.26, just like that. And then the last thing we need is the position of the uh, screw hole. So let's get the screw. I'm going to assume these have to be metric. Okay, 0.08. And then what I'm going to do is, so we, we draw a hole that's 0.08, so we know the diameter of the hole, and then we can actually measure based off the hole itself. Now, the hole is obviously going to be centered uh, horizontally in this tab. But the question is what the vertical position. So what we can do is we can measure it from the top of the hole to the top of the tab. That gives us uh, 0.116. Then over here on the computer, and again, I'm going to set as much as I can up in Illustrator. Uh, we can go here and we can basically we'll just redraw what we measured with the calipers. And then we'll put the circle in the same place it was with the calipers. This part's going to seem incredibly <laughs> sketchy, but I do it all the time. I hold the part up to the screen and get a basic idea if it's aligning. It looks pretty good. All right, so I saved this file. I'm going to take the thing that I made. I'm going to copy it and go over here. I'm just going to make a uh, blank drawing. I'm going to put it up here. Well, I guess we don't really need to have this, it centered necessarily. But one thing I did notice when you import the DXF, it'll use the upper left-hand side of the page as 00, zero when you take it into a 3D program. Export as, I don't know, ref DXF. Great. Let's go to Fusion 360. Gonna go on the bottom, insert DXF. All right, so there's our basic shape. So we're gonna do something. We're gonna start out pretty simple. I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna measure the depth from the outside of the case to this plastic lip insert right there. And that is also the same depth as the pl plastic case to the uh, top of the metal insert for the tripod mount and <laughs> 0.1 inch uh, maybe <laughs> maybe they were using imperial i don't know just first things first i'm going to just take this i'm going to go down negative 0.1 inch 
Now we're going to take what's left of the plastic and we're going to measure the uh, inside depth of the countersunk screw mount. It's going to give us 0.064. So back on the computer, we're going to take those two and we're going to extrude them again, negative 0.064. We'll do this. We'll take our tab and we'll extrude it negative 1.4, which is the, I'm sorry, negative 0.14. That's the total depth, right? Then we'll look at it from the back. And I'm going to just uh, give it a big fillet. And then up at the top, I'm going to, uh, oh, darn it, I don't want to do that. Then up on the top, I'm going to drop this down 0.1. Then to ensure it goes into place, I'm going to fill at the ends. Probably not necessary, but it's fun to do. Oops, no, 07. That'll work. Oh, we also have this little lip here. We need to take that into account. So that lip, let's see how far below the surface that is. It is 0.035 below the surface. Okay, and then its thickness is 0.02. It's pretty thin. Back on the computer, we're going to take where that lip is, and uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to extrude it. We're going to go 0 0.55 down. Pff, I'm sorry, 0 0.055. Oh, I put in two decimal points. Sorry. <laughs> and then, so that's the total, and then we're going to go down 0 0.035, which will be the offset. So what I think I'll do is I'll 3D print this. It won't take very long, and then we can see if it fits. I'm actually printing it on end because all of the weird features like the tabs and the lip are at the top. So if I print it end up, I don't need to worry about additional supports. Although it does print much slower this way. So I scored this uh, several times with an X-Acto knife and yeah, this is ABS. I thought it was ABS. Should just break. Ooh, I don't want to mess up my HDMI door that I never use. Why would I, uh oh, oh, see that on the inside? Got the support piece, I'm gonna have to cut those too. I wanna do this gingerly, I mean, not just because I am a ginger, but because, you know, I wanna keep the camera looking okay. It's kind of weird though, I mean, this is only like an $800 camera. It's like, <laughs> I've modified things far, far more valuable than this in the past. Actually, if you take inflation into account, this Canon that I'm filming with, which is only 1080p, uh, was more expensive because I believe it well it was more expensive it was like a thousand dollars versus eight hundred dollars but it was eight years prior which means eight times 2.5 would be uh, what 20 so 20 percent so thousand dollar camera in 2010 would be like a twelve hundred dollar camera now although you know electronics seem to be immune from inflation it's because they consistently find poorer and poorer countries in which to manufacture them all right. You stood up to be counted with the enemy of everything the Grail stands for. Now that I've separated this panel, I'm going to put it back in place. Um, I did have to chop off the corner where the plastic ripped. That's unfortunate, but oh well, c'est la vie. I also have to plug in this tiny little JSD connector into the motherboard. That's for the speaker. It actually uh, ripped out when I removed it, but it was easy to fix since it's just a uh, IDC JST which is a <laughs> insulation displacement connector for a Japanese solderless terminal. Is that enough acronyms for you? Hopefully. Let's just see if this fits first before I bother plugging that back in. This, oh, that goes under? Oh, I should butt up against it, right? Well, I wanted to get this project done quickly because not only do I need this camera, have all the screws laid out <laughs> in a certain way that makes sense in my mind, as to how they came out of the unit. So I want to make sure I, you know, I don't want to start another project and mess up all my screws. Who did this at the factory? Like a mouse? Got like this little mouse, this little squares like, my job is to insert this cable. <laughs> and I get paid with nuts. We pay him peanuts. Oh, you mean you don't pay him very much money? No, we literally pay him with peanuts. Yeah, it's like most of this camera is just that moving lens or moving image sensor thing. It's pretty incredible. I think that's kind of a lost 
art with everything being digital now. I know, I think Dave Jones was talking about that. He's, or either him or Tecmo, and they're taking apart some Sony thing from the 90s, and it's just like a, it's like a mechanical design wonderland, you know? <laughs> All the stuff they managed to do. Oh, I, I figured it out. One of these uh, screw posts actually, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, there was a slot inside the camera, and it slid into a slot on this panel. And then also, this screw is longer. Ah, yes, my trusty old Radio Shack screwdriver reassembles the ten zillionth thing in its lifetime. These remind me of the screws inside of my teeth. I was so thrilled I got my, uh, had my checkup for my dental implants because I needed to replace two of my teeth. The implant is basically a titanium screw with a set screw hole inside of it. And then they screw these caps onto the top of it. And then eventually they'll screw new teeth onto it. And I'd like to get all titanium teeth if I can. I don't know if I can, but um, anyway, it was so satisfying because I went in there and um, he just takes out this tiny little screwdriver and then he <laughs> unscrews the caps from my implants. And then he shows it to me. It looks like a little Hershey's Kiss, a little tiny Hershey's Kiss with like an M1.5 thread on the end. And I'm like, oh man, that is so satisfying. I can unscrew my teeth now. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, these little metric screws made me think of that. Oh, Sony always makes such cool stuff. Except for the bottom of this camera. The bottom of this camera was a fail. Other than that, it's a good camera. I'm sure we'll use this as a uh, B camera for Possumus 3. So this will be the camera that will get like... Uh, strapped on the front of like 4x4s and jet skis and dropped off cliffs. I mean, you probably never actually saw it, but when we did the show, we actually 3D printed a lot of custom camera mounts. Like a lot of quick release things, and you never saw it, but it was there. So, because now you've kind of seen it. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'll take the basic 2D design and I'll export it into Fusion, and then I'll figure out the depths. Got a pretty decent amount of space to work here. Oh, if you look at that, that looks like a heat sink for some kind of component. See how it's recessed? I bet it is. All right, let's see how we did. Oh, it's a little tight. Yeah, that tab is awfully thin. See how it barely printed? Because it was too warm. Then looks like, well, since 3D prints tend to expand a little bit, so that part seems to fit in okay. But then we got an issue up here where, oh, actually, maybe we can do it like that. That might work. So, up, ah, get into the slot tab. Come on. This really goes to show how wide of an angle lens the Sony, the one that I'm holding in my hand, has. Okay, let's try that again. Slide it in there. Slide it in. Come on. Okay, so we missed that. Now we gotta go up or away from myself. Oh, I think I see the problem. These fins here, they're much closer to the surface. Don't know why. <sighs> yep. So that's the problem. So we've got those fins there that are a certain height. But aside from this lip, this is a constant height, and that's why it won't fit, because it's compressing against those fins. This is a really hard video to edit. It appears that I did not film the part where I adjusted the design and then reprinted the part to accommodate for those fins, but trust me, I did it, and then this happened. Let's try this again. Hot off the press. Happy little clouds. There we go. Yeah, good fit. Let's put that piece in place. Now we don't have anything to hold it yet, but you know, one step at a time. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. And I'm still inside doing this. Oh yeah, look at that. So even though this isn't the final piece, I screwed it in place to just to make sure everything fit. And uh, take this, which is my magnetic camera mount, and just make sure it interfaces correctly. 
which would also tell us if any tripod mount interface correctly. Looks pretty good. Let's test it with the magnetic mount. All right. Hmm. Maybe I don't even need to bother. Well, this is still a little loose, but I have an idea for that. But uh, looks like the design fits. Oh, there we go. I made a. I found a center point by measuring that arc up there. All right. So this is point. 395 divided by 2, if we're going to go for half of it. Same thing over here. 0.395 divided by 2. Okay, that ensures that it's centered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the dimension tool and go from the top of the circle to that, give it a dimension of 0.02. There we go. That should bring it into line with what we need. All right, and so the rest of it's pretty much a rectangle with one side lobbed off. All right, so we're going to measure the height down from that line we just drew. That's 0.53, and we'll draw a line parallel with that, and then we'll put a dimension on that. From this point to that point is 0.53. Now, we don't need to worry about the hole because that's on the other side of the drawing, although it looks like it, it should be centered, but is it? Jeez, it sure looks like it is. I guess we'll find out. We can always adjust it later on. I don't really know what the point of this notch is here, but I'll still draw it in so we have the best tight fit around this part. I glued part of it back together. So this is the camera mount itself. It's a piece of metal. Feels like aluminum. Fits like that. Now if you look around it, it's not even fully held in place. They have points that are holding it in place. I don't know if you can see that right there. I wonder if they did that so, you know, if it receives shock, it's not so encased in plastic that it can't move, you know? Like the proverb, the tree that does not bend will break. Uh, but I don't know, it seems kind of loosey-goosey. Yeah, so I, what I think I might do, even though it's maybe not the be best design decision, is to encapsulate this as best I can in plastic. Now, of course, this nub here goes into a metal receiver on the camera right so I can't go I can't go too far with it now we go back to the computer drawing we have a shape for that metal piece of course we want to have a little bit of tolerance so let's go into edit sketch and we'll do an offset now I think we have a decent amount of space around that so I'll just bump that up so I'll just uh, make an offset actually sometimes it's hard to make an offset from an offset it won't let you do it and I'm going to, well, what was it? It was 0.05 off the bottom of the case. So if this is the bottom of it, we're going to take this and we're going to extrude it 0.05. And that will give us a little bit of mass to hold that in place. Yeah, I think we could probably go further with this. We just want to avoid that screw there. So let's go, that should be safe. Let's go all the way that way. And then we'll add some more mass down here as well. Then we'll add some more mass at the top, just so there's more plastic, more thick plastic around that portion of it. Let's take these bits and add some more mass. So I'm going to extrude this 0.050 as well. I kind of want to add a few more features while I'm in here, so I can maybe redo that quick lock, maybe make it so it's not magnetic. Let's do this. Let's take this surface because this is a surface that would interface with our, our quick lock and we're going to create a new sketch. The reason we create a new sketch is it will have the feature of our manually moved sticker in it, right? So let's grab a circle. So let's see. Let's go 0.7. Yeah, maybe 6.5. So what I'm thinking we can do is we can make like a, a half moon crescent. Half moon crescent. That's kind of redundant. <laughs> so let's say we have a, a cutout here tolerance let's go 0.65 no that's what i typed in let's go 0.6 eh, okay yeah 0.06 would probably i'm sorry 0.6 would probably work oh, that would be more than enough tolerance maybe too tolerant 625 how about 62 we'll we'll we'll, we'll meet it in the middle okay now the pivot wouldn't be on this side but we'll still draw in the circle because we can use that to build the no it's not three it's point three come on yeah so here's what i think we should do we should take this 
and then we'll go up here. I'm gonna bisect it. Okay, so here's why I did this. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take all of this, and I'm going to basically remove it. Okay, we cut that out. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll take this, and we'll wipe it out. I'll grab that too. Okay, so here's here's how this would work. So we'll have like a disc that attaches to the um, to the main body, and then if we measure in the camera how much depth we have, I believe it's point two that we have. Uh, yeah, a little bit more than point two. Let's take this disc and go negative point two. Now we take this disc. And then we're going to go negative point one two. So you would take this body and it would be attached to our quick lock, right? So let's set that pivot point. And then you would rotate it like 90 degrees like that. And then it would hold inside the camera because what we'd also do is we take this and we're going to come down again point one inch, right? So that should lock it in place. Right, so let's say this, you know, this is part of our mounting shaft. So when to load the camera, you would basically, well, this wouldn't be moving, the camera would be moving. You'd put this into place like that, and then you would rotate it 90 degrees, and then you would have a lock. So if this is how the camera is hanging in space, we want the weight to sit on that key that we just described, which is this. Yeah, so we're going to want the key to actually... Uh, rest uh, like this. See, that way, when the weight of the camera pulls down against it, it won't rotate. And we'll just add a few more chunks of plastic. There we go. Now we can only rotate in one direction. I want to make sure that it's stable, so let's make a little lip here. It doesn't have to be very, a very big one, and I'm going to make it fit I want to make sure that it's stable, so let's make a little lip here. It doesn't have to be very, a very big one, and I'm going to make it fit. And I want this lip to go underneath the plastic here. See that? Like my uh, dial caliper is. So we could go about 080. And, well, I'll show you my plan for this. So let's go in 0.080, okay? And then let's make this piece about 0.5 inches. That should be good. Now, of course, the question might be, how do we print this? Because, you know, that edge is like our, our main surface. And that's an excellent question. We should be able to go the full depth of this. So let's go 0 0.2 down. But wait. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a separate body. So let's turn that off. Okay. So you go 0 0.2 down. The thickness of this plastic that we chopped is about 07. So here, now we'll take it, we'll go down. 0.07. Now we need a way to mechanically attach this to the front half of the unit, right? So let's do this. Let's edit this sketch again. Edit sketch. Because again, you can never you can never assume that the tolerance is going to be perfect. So you should always have a little bit, and yeah, maybe not that much. 7.5, 7.8. Okay, now we'll bring that up to this. Straight over. And then straight over to that one. So what I want to do next here is to actually add some additional screw holes that will connect the small piece inside of the camera to the uh, tripod layer that we're building. So we're basically going to have a 3D printed part already installed in the camera. We can lightly glue it in place. And it's not actually going to be held by the glue. It'll be held by that lip on the right-hand side underneath the plastic that we broke off. But the reason we have to do it in two pieces is because otherwise we can't snap the tripod piece into place. Remember how it had that angle that went in on the left and then clicked down? Well, we can't click it down on two sides. I mean, we could, but we might risk breaking it if we did that. So yeah, we're just going to create this piece and uh, have some additional screws to put it together. So now I'm just going to check the distance of the hole so we know the proper length of screw to insert into this so we don't you know, mess something up or uh, drill into a circuit board. It looks like it's about 0.13 inches. So if I don't have any screws that are the right length, I can just cut them with my Nipix pliers. Uh, but it should work out. All right, let's get this printed out and uh, see if the parts work. 
Okay, I have the parts printed. So here's the first piece. That's going to be our um, our extra screw mount, and I'm going to glue it in right about here. So the idea with this is the glue's not really meant to hold it. The fact that it will tuck in under this lip, that's what's supposed to hold it, allegedly. I guess we'll see if that works. I mean, I have no doubt it will work. Man, I'm having a hard time getting this to stick. Maybe that placement will work? I don't know. All right, so here's this piece. Hopefully it works. Let's see if it's lined up. Persuade it down a little bit. None of this would have been a problem if Sony just had a proper mount for this camera. I think that may be close enough. Okay, so this fits into a slot between the metal and the screw. Then we need to fit this slot in up here by my left hand middle finger. Come on. Get in there. There we go. Get in there. There we go. Happy little clouds. And what I can do is I can take my pointy tool and feel down in there. Okay, so yeah, it seems like the holes are lined up. Let's squeeze it into place. All right, let's check if it's flat. Pretty good. All right, so let's get... Uh, where's my screwdriver? Why am I whispering? I am the camera whisperer. I believe it was 0.13. Um, these are the shortest screws I have, and they're about 0.17. The screws can be any color you want, as long as they're black. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna eyeball this. Oh yeah, Nipix for the win. All right, what did we get? Oh, a little too long, shoot. <laughs> That's okay, I've got lots of these screws. That's right, it's time for Clicky Screwdriver. Mr. Clicky. almost flush. This curved plastic here, that piece we put underneath should fit under the curved plastic, which should prevent this from rising up. <laughs> yeah, looks like it'll work. I'm gonna screw these a little bit more. Let's get this camera out onto a tray. Nice! Oh, pfft. I accidentally removed my camera mount, which is tape and solder. And finally, this one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, that looks store-bought. Oh, the adhesive wanted to stay on the original piece of plastic. That's, that's all right. That's what double-sided tape is for. Oh yeah, it looks professional. All right, let's try it with the um, <clears throat> magnetic mount. Make sure that fits. Like a treat. I mean, I guess I don't really necessarily need to rebuild a mount right now. I mean, the magnetic mount will still work, but I have this crescent mount, which I could use in, in the future. And that's why sometimes the videos wobble. <laughs> but look how handy this is. Then it comes out at the beginning of the movie. You are now watching, uh, I don't know, Up. This mod belongs in a museum. I'm out here in my garage. Check it out. I gotta leave now. It's pretty cool. I still need to learn how to use it, but I've already started to make a mess. But anyway, the reason I'm out here is because I'm trying to think of the most extreme way to test this, and I have an idea. I just need to find a, um, a uh, quarter inch eye hook, which, how can I not have one? These are all 1024. This is ridiculous. How can I not have this? I am very disappointed with myself for different reasons than usual. What's this? Are these quarter? Yeah, they're imperial. Okay, there we go. Man, I've been really spoiled by the very wide lens of the Sony 
not used to this cannon here. All right, there we go. There's a uh, quarter inch screw. I wish I had one with an eye hook, but I can make this work. Yeah, closest thing I have to rope is this weed whacker material. Well, at least I know it's strong. You're probably getting really nervous right now watching this. And you're like, is he gonna do what we think he's gonna do? And the answer is yes, I am. I've been working on the railroad. I didn't know you could fly a plane. Fly, yes. Land, no. I guess that kind of came true for Harrison in his later years. Now I'm in my backyard. Right? I'm gonna use this to catch a fish. Oh, this is so dumb. I shouldn't do this. Oh, what the heck. Oh, I just noticed a big pile of rocks over there on my right. So, <laughs> hope it doesn't fly off in that direction. Ah. The camera's fine, but I'm gonna puke. Ah. Oh. Hey, look! <sighs> All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video about how to Ooh, measure and replace parts using 3D printing. I need to sit down. <laughs> <laughs>